Hey everyone, Derek here with a quick news update on Splatoon 2. The Splatoon Tumblr has updated with new information on new and returning weapons, sub-weapons, and specials coming to the game, and there are some pretty massive changes to a few of these, so let's break them down. First up is the Blaster, which is a relative of the Shooter family, but it fires balls of ink that explode in mid-air. It's a bit lacking in the range and fire rate departments, but when it hits, it hits. And even when it doesn't hit, it can still hit thanks to the ink explosion. It comes equipped with a Toxic Mist sub and a Splashdown special. And then it goes into the Toxic Mist, which we've already covered in a past update. Continuing on, we have the return of the Octobrush, which has dense bristles that fling a thick stream of ink with each swipe. It comes equipped with the Auto Bomb sub and the Inkjet special to keep distant foes on their toes. The Auto Bomb seems to be the English name of the robot bomb that we mentioned in a previous update. And once again, it just seeks out enemies, kind of like the Seeker, but it's not always going forward. Next is the returning Splattershot Pro. Developed for more advanced users by the team behind the Splattershot, it has incredible precision and solid range. Great for players who have a lot of faith in their accuracy and positioning. The set comes equipped with a point sensor sub, and you can cover your teammates with the Ink Storm special, which they then go over. First up is the Ink Storm, which we first saw in the reveal trailer for Splatoon 2. All you have to do is throw this device to create a cloud that rains ink down onto the battlefield. The cloud gradually moves away from where the device was thrown. Then there's of course the returning point sensor. If thrown near opponents, it will mark them temporarily, revealing their location to your teammates. So no major changes there. There's also the return of the Dynamo Roller. High strength and long range are its game, but its motor does weigh it down a smidge. It comes with Ink Mines as a sub, and the Stingray Special which allows it to take down foes from a comfortable distance. Then there's the Ink Mine which seems to have one of the biggest changes of any of the returning weapons or sub-weapons. Instead of an explosive trap, it's another kind of trap. When an opponent gets close, it activates, revealing their location to your teammates, kind of like the point sensor that you can leave behind. Also, you can place up to two at once. So you could actually place these to see if the opposite team is coming a certain way and respond in kind. Great for strategic defense, but very different from how it acted in the original game. And finally, we have the Splash-O-Matic, a weapon fine-tuned for highly accurate barrages. It's a little lacking in power, but provides a good cover spread with its rapid fire. It comes equipped with a Toxic Mist sub and Inkjet special, and is recommended for aggressive players who want to lay the splat down. And that's all of our returning and new weapons, at least that we know of so far. Most of them seem to work the same as they did before, with some major changes here and there. But there's also, of course, the new sub-weapons that we're seeing, or how sub-weapons are acting now, and it looks like there's a lot of new strategies to use this time around, especially with the ink mines. That actually affects me a lot because the ink mines were one of my favorite sub-weapons in the original Splatoon, so I gotta think about whether I wanna use them again, or how I wanna change them up to still be useful to my team. But what do you guys think of these new weapons? Are there any that you're really looking forward to trying out? Let us know in the comments, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Splatoon and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye.